All right, let's talk HR. What do you think when you see HR? I see uh, homeroom, I see Harlequin romance, I also see human resources, but when you think HR, you can think of all kinds of different things. And I thought about this while having about five drinks going, what is HR? And uh, it's definitive, human resources, there's a whole list there, but it's not sexy. It's not sexy enough based on what you do on a daily basis. So let's change it, especially the last one, because you've all been there where you say, let's, I'm a human, I just want to run away and hide. We've all had those days at work, right? Let's call you authentic warriors. Not just warriors, because warriors just battle for the sake of battling, but authentic warriors have an ethos, a purpose. You want to set other people up for success. And that's what authenticity and being a warrior is about, especially in the team concept. Now, if any, many of you guys, I said, not ultimate warrior, authentic warrior. But the same premise applies, to be able to set up other people to succeed. And how do we do that? It's a mental frame. It starts mentally. It's about being authentic. It's a statement. It's about being genuine. It's about being all those things, honest, transparent, transparent and have an ethos. But more importantly, it's intuitive. You have to have a situational awareness like Navy SEALs. Navy SEALs have a great situational awareness where they take people who are driven by me and transform them into we. And it's a, it's, it's a skill that is, is part of the fabric of every successful team out there, see corporate, not-for-profit, what have you. Situational awareness is about colors. White in the Navy SEALs means you don't care. Life is beating you up. Yellow means your radar is on, but you're only really thinking about yourself. Orange means that you're purpose-driven and you want to be ready to help somebody else. And red is about activity, going to war. Now, if someone says, well, it's business. Business isn't personal. I say, you're completely wrong. 8,760 hours in a year, right? 2,000 of those hours in a year go to work. 23% of the hours that your employees give you makes it personal. So from a leadership perspective, it's awfully important for you to realize that life gets in the way. There's no direct line from point A to point B from a leadership standpoint. It's, it's an adapt and overcome journey, and it, again, it's very personal. It's about creating the right place and the right time for your, for your team. By doing that, not only do you affect the retention, not only do you affect performance, but they're able to, when, they, when they're asked, what do you do for a living? This is what I do. Now there it is, big hair, big dreams back in the day. When I was going to the Boys and Girls Club, I was so fortunate because I met so many great leaders along the way. And I realized then that the old school coach was wrong, completely wrong. The whole idea that, hey, there's no, there's no I in team, completely wrong. The I in team is the most valuable variable you could have in a group. Again, it doesn't matter what team it is. It could be an Olympic gold medal relay team. It could be a, uh, a team that sells widgets. The fact of the matter is all these eyes make up a successful team because what you're doing is you're investing in the possibility, the mere possible contribution that someone can make. And when we wake up in the morning, we can go in two directions, right? One direction means we're going the wrong direction. We don't really care. We're going to punch the clock and work. Or... We're gonna love where we're going. We love what we do. It's a part of who we are. We identify, it's part of our, pur our purpose. And that means our worst day isn't that bad when we have a bad day. And I played pro football for nine years. I played for the Ottawa Rough Riders. We had some bad days. 20 wins, 54 losses in a four year period. And I paid the price. I tell you, it was my right place and my right time. Now I'm gonna tell you some things here. You I think I'm the most courageous football player or the worst football player. Against Toronto, caught a ball, blew up my knee, five knee surgeries later on. In Saskatchewan, I ran across the middle, caught a pass, a cold day in Regina, I turned and my rib cage folded over and tore all the rib cartilage. In BC, I caught a pass across the middle, the guy had brown eyes, that's all I remember, and I woke up, broken nose, three teeth through my lip, dislocated shoulder, concussion, and it felt great because it led me to this moment, T-ball. Hamilton Tiger Cat football player, going to the Boys and Girls Club to hand out trophies to a T-ball, all these kids. They got their T-shirts, Jays, Yankees, ketchup, mustard, boogers on their T-shirts. They don't care who I am, but this one kid pulls up, says, Mr. of Rare. I said, yes, because do you want to swap shirts? Yes, let's do it. He took his hat off, and he didn't have a stitch of hair on his head. Turned out his story was that he was diagnosed, diagnosed with leukemia, went through chemotherapy, and lost all his hair. He takes the shirt, I give the t-shirt back to his family, because I don't know the story's gonna end. A year later, we play Winnipeg, we get the crap kicked out of us, but after the game, people are there, we get them next time, family, friends, wives, some guys had both their wives and their girlfriends there, but I heard a voice, Mr. of Rare, and I looked down, and the second thing I noticed was the sweatshirt. 
ketchup, mustard, boogers. First thing I noticed was the curly hair. Serendipitous moments will bring you to great places. And if you're a leader, that's your end game. That's your goal. Set your team up to succeed, and these moments just gratuitously make, make their way to you. Thank you. Have a great one, everybody.